Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about detoxing your schedule. One thing that I've learned is that when you make time for God, you will actually have time to do everything that you need to do. So let's look at what that looks like in a daily life. It's important for us to set our day in motion by bringing God into our plans. And he's going to allow us and help us to be able to do everything that we need to do at the right time we need to do it. He will supernaturally maximize our time so that we can love and serve our family, so that we can serve in ministry, we can meet deadlines, we can do a great job at work. He will help us be able to have encounters and actually meet people that he has supernaturally already wanted us to meet. We're going to minister to the people that he sends into our path. And then also we're going to be able to experience rest and refreshing because he also gives us the time to be able to do that. So I want us to read Ephesians 5, 11 through 15 and the message. And this is what it says. It says, don't waste your time on useless work, mere busy work, the barren pursuits of darkness. Expose these things for the sham they are. It's a scandal when people waste their lives on things they must do in the darkness where no one will see. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to look at some of these things that we've been doing that actually are useless work, busy work, and even have led us into a pursuit of darkness. Number one, what we need to do is we need to identify exactly what is filling our daily schedule. This will help us know what we need to remove to be able to detox our schedule. We need to ask ourselves these questions. All right, you ready? Number one, what time are we wasting doing useless work? So you may say, well, what's useless work? Useless work is things that you're doing that are not causing any fruit, that bring nothing good in your life, that really bring no benefit to your life. So it's really useless work. The next question is, what time are we spending doing busy work? Now, sometimes we create busy work, things to just keep us busy. Um, I mean, I could, you know, every day make a decision to go and rake my yard every day. Now that I could be busy and I mean, and that's, there's nothing wrong with me doing that, but I would just be making myself busy with no real purpose. Now, another question you could ask is what time are we wasting in the pursuit of darkness? Now, you may be actually participating in things that are actually leading you to sin. And that's what the scripture is talking about. So there may be some activities that you're actually doing that are going to ultimately lead you into sin. The enemy is really looking for ways to fill our schedule with his brand of entertainment that actually leads us to darkness, that leads us a not fulfilling purpose and not doing really what God has um, designed for us to be able to do. So what are some of those time fillers that he uses in order to do this? He uses TV shows, video games, YouTube, Netflix, social media, all this crazy stuff that we fill our minds, our eyes, and our ears with on a daily basis. And he uses these avenues to be able to send messages to us um, with his worldly messages. So they actually come in and they come in not just to convince us that his message is right. They even come in with a hook to hook us for even future waste of time. Um, as an example, if you're on a video game and you've hit a certain level, you're going to do everything and spend as many hours as you need to, to get to the next level or to beat, you know, someone, one of your opponents and get to a higher level than they have. Um, if you're watching a TV show, you may want to watch the next episode just to find out what happened with the next character. So see, there's always a hook to take you, keep you in that moment of wasting your time. So when our days are full of this useless work, or even busy work, we actually are deceived into thinking that we do not have time for God and we don't have time for ministry. So let's detox our schedule of all this junk that we've been filling our lives with. And let's discover really what we should be filling our lives with. So number two, let's wake up, right? Open our eyes and be real about how we're spending our time. Ephesians 5.16 says, make the most of every living and breathing moment because these are evil times. Wouldn't you agree? It's exactly what the word is saying. We have to make the most of every living and breathing moment. 
So let me share with you a, a time and season in my life where I really learned and grew in the understanding of what I needed to do in order to allow God to assist me in planning my days. It was a very intense season of my life. Um, first of all, I was married and had a home and finances to manage, a husband to take care of. I was raising four kids, my nieces and nephews who were two, five, seven, and 11. So four kids to have to take care of. I was employed full time as an operations manager running a business for someone. I was attending a university, also trying to obtain two bachelor's degrees. I was a business owner of a Christian coffee house, and I was a leader in ministry at my church. So I needed to make sure that the most of every living and breathing moment actually was productive and helped me to be successful in every area of my life. And what I learned was that I couldn't let laziness come in and interfere in any area of my life. So some of you may actually realize that some of these fillers have come in because laziness has kind of invited them into your life. However, hard work helped me to keep laziness away. I prayed for God to help me create a schedule that would actually help me do my best in every area of my life. And this is what happened. My schedule was planned with very specific focus days each and every day. I can tell you what I was going to church on Thursday nights. I took the kids to the library to get their reading books every Monday night. And on the way home, we stopped at the grocery store to get groceries. When we got home, we made sure their week was planned and they had their prayers and their time in the word and their baths before bed. And everything was already planned out. My day actually, of course, started with the Lord faithfully every day, worship, word, and prayer, because I needed God in every moment of my day. My morning and evening routines were consistent every day, me and the kids. We always made sure that in the morning there was a routine and a time we woke up, a time we got dressed, and a time we got them ready for school. My commute and working hours were maximized by the Lord. My business was actually sustained by God. He gave me the ability to do things that I would not have been able to do on my own. My schoolwork was excellent. I was able to graduate you know, with an A average. And of course, my ministry life um, was fulfilled and my purpose was being fulfilled because ministry was a priority in my life. I didn't look for ways to fit ministry into my schedule. I fit God and ministry into my schedule and everything else. Then God allowed me to be able to see where it was going to be done. So I believe that this season helped me actually get qualified for the work that I do today at The Way. Because I was able to allow God to show me how to maximize my time, today I'm able to do a lot more ministry than I would have if I would have given in to laziness or I would have not invited God to help me set my daily schedule. So don't let the enemy squeeze out the time that you really, you need to be spending, spending on the purpose that God has for your life. Because you will be just delighted to just live a life that God wants when you allow him to set a schedule for you. And number three, be intentional about how you spend your time. I'm very intentional about how I spend my time. I know that everything that I do or participate in, there's got to be a purpose for it. It's got to bring a benefit. And sometimes it's just resting. But now I understand that I'm taking this time to rest. And so there's a plan and I'm able to relax and receive refreshing from the Lord during the times of resting. So there's not always just doing. There's also resting times. There's times with your family, times with your husband or your spouse. All of that is all part of God's plan. Ephesians 5.17 says, Therefore, do not be vague and thoughtless and foolish, but understanding and firmly grasping what the will of the Lord is. So don't just let life happen to you. Ask God for a plan according to his will, and he's going to give it to you. Because in Proverbs 16, 3, it says, commit to the Lord everything you do. Then he will make your plan succeed. When we bring God into our plans, he will make us successful in everything that we do. I've experienced that. It's just one of the most amazing lives you can lead. So begin today to detox your schedule, and you will enjoy a healthy, fulfilling, and successful life.